I am back with a third round of reader questions about The Boy From Tomorrow. Luciana also contributed these three questions I'm about to answer, so thank you very much, Luciana, for sending these in. Question number one. Why did you choose to set a play, The Man From Tomorrow, inside the story? Is theater something you enjoy? I don't get to the theater as often as I would like to, but I do enjoy sitting down to watch a story unfold between live performers. For me, the best kind of theater tells a fundamental and substantial truth about the human condition that anyone sitting in that theater can recognize and understand and empathize with. The playwright is not only showing us what matters most to their characters, they're also showing us what matters most to them. And so in Byron's case, he is telling this time travel story on stage that is directly inspired by Josie and Alec's friendship. And so, sure, he is entertaining this audience in 1920s New York City, but he's also encoding this sort of secret message to posterity. So he's saying to Alec, who hasn't even been born yet, you are dear to our family. You have made a difference in our lives and we will always remember you. What do you think about time and parallel universes? Whenever I've written about situations in which the future seems to influence the past, I've opted for a fixed theory of time travel. And what I mean by that is you can go back in time and influence what's past, but you were always going to do that. And so ultimately you're not changing anything. So in The Boy From Tomorrow, there is never a past in which Josie and Cass don't pull out this illicit talking board and meet their friend from the future. It was always going to happen, and it was actually woven into history before Alec was even born. That said, the more I read about astrophysics and time travel theory, the more I'm thinking about writing a story in which the characters can travel into alternate realities and affect different timelines. So I'm sure I will have more to say about this in a future video. Now I'm going to answer a super spoilery question, so if you haven't read the book yet, please click pause and come back to this video when you have finished the book. Question three, what do you think happened between Alec and Nora? In Alec's last scene in the book, we move forward in time a little bit and he's now a college student and he goes to meet Cass and Josie's family. Um, these are Cass's descendants, her daughter, Emily Jane, and her great-granddaughter, Nora. Now, Nora is Alec's, age, Alec's own age, and she grew up hearing all of these bedtime stories about the boy from tomorrow. So she considers him a dear friend of her family, even though she's only meeting him for the first time. And she's also the only person, apart from Danny, who is Alec's friend we know throughout the book, she's the only person his age who knows about his impossible friendship and the only person who can believe him. And so it's natural that they would have a special connection. And I imply that there may be some romance there blossoming in the future, but this is beyond the scope of a middle grade novel. I'll be doing uh, one more of these videos. So if you have any questions about the book, do please either leave a comment below this video or you can email me at cometparty at gmail.com. I would love to answer your question in this last video. So thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.